in Alabama, even before the Communist Party showed up, there was already a tradition of, of labor militancy, especially in coal mines. Birmingham was a modernizing city under the heel of white supremacy. It's fairly cosmopolitan. You have formerly enslaved people, you have working class whites, you have an increase in European immigration. This is sort of the racial dynamic of what it meant to begin to organize a left movement in a state like this. The party begins in 1929. Now, here's the thing. They actually didn't go down there to organize black workers. They went there to organize workers with the presumption that black workers are much harder because they're more ignorant, they're kind of backwards. They were anti-racist, but they still believed that white workers were the vanguard. And they get down there and then they hold a meeting and who shows up? And a few white workers, but black workers show up. Have another meeting, gets bigger and bigger. All these black workers, they end up having to turn to the people who came there, who showed up and kept showing up over and over again. Now here's the big irony, is that spatial segregation meant that the white leadership could easily meet with white workers, but it was hard to meet with black workers. And that meant that they really couldn't control the party. You had homegrown black leadership that made decisions. And because of that, the party took on the characteristics of a kind of black liberation movement committed to class struggle. And so what ends up happening is that lynching in the communist worldview becomes a class weapon. You know, it's a weapon of racism. There's, they don't deny that part, but it's also a class weapon. And once you see lynching as a class weapon, then you can see poor black people being corralled by the police for crimes they didn't commit as class war prisoners. The fact of the matter is that the party was winning they were winning adherents, they were winning small battles, and it continues to grow. All that repression that we see in the early 30s in the rural areas kept them at bay to a certain degree, but it didn't succeed fully. It wasn't until the Cold War, where you have a national repressive apparatus, that a lot of the communists actually went underground and left the South. But they didn't all leave, a lot of them ended up in the civil rights movement. What's amazing to me is how, like I don't have, I've never found any evidence of someone being beaten by the police badly and saying, I quit. They keep coming back and keep coming back. And in many ways, I find that astounding. <laughs>